Welcome to the Horses Advocate Radio Show. I'm so grateful that you're spending your time here with me today. I am Jeff Tucker, and these are my opinions, observations, and experiences based on working with horses since 1973 and a horse vet since 1984. Please remember, while I am a veterinarian, I'm not your veterinarian. Only he or she can diagnose and treat your horse. Please visit thehorsesadvocate.com for more topics and in-depth articles, photos, videos, and courses. Thank you for seeking honest information and helping your horses thrive in a human world. Hey, it's Doc T here with another Horses Advocate podcast. And today I want to talk to you about a simple um, explanation of what Cushing's disease is. So Cushing's disease, by definition, is a high level of cortisol in the horse's blood. And it seems like a lot of horses have this condition. And a lot of people I ask don't know what it is, how they got it, what they're treating it with, or anything else about it. So let me put it into a nutshell. For a couple of years now, I've been saying that it's a neurotransmitter problem. And recently, the AAP uh, meeting, the American Association of Equine Practitioners meeting, they called it a neurodegenerative disease, which is exactly what it is. So let's take a look at how a hormone works and then specifically what's happening in Cushing's disease and what you're trying to treat. A hormone works by measuring a value of something in the blood and then reacting to that value by either increase in production of that product that you want or decrease in the production. And it works in a two-step process. It's called a feedback loop. Well, with cortisol, the hypothalamus, which is a portion of the brain, will determine how much cortisol is circulating in the blood. And then the hypothalamus will send a, a transmission via a nerve to the pituitary gland. In the pituitary gland, they're responsible for making what I call work orders. Work orders are precursors. They're little instruction sets that go off to certain organs and tell these organs to produce more of a, a product. In this case, the pituitary is going to send out something called ACTH, or adrenocorticotropic hormone. Now, ACTH goes off to the adrenal glands, and it tells them to make more cortisol. So now, the instruction set says, raise your cortisol. So the cortisol starts to go up, and the hypothalamus measures this, measures this and says, okay, we have enough, and it sends another signal to the pituitary gland saying, slow down. We don't need as much. Cut the work orders. So that ACTH is decreased, and the adrenals stop making as much cortisol as they should. So the cortisol stays at a good level. It actually rises in the morning and decreases at night and is well regulated. Cortisol is a very important natural hormone that we all have, horses and humans. This also happens for uh, the kidneys and it's the hypothalamus measures how uh, concentrated our urine is and it sends out to the pituitary, hey, send out something called antidiuretic hormone to make the urine more concentrated. And ADH goes out to the kidneys and, and makes it more concentrated. And as the concentration gets um, more uh, set, it sends another instruction to the pituitary saying, hey, decrease antidiuretic hormone and our urine um, concentration goes up. Now, let's add another thing. Let's look at the increasing, decreasing daylight. The hypothalamus is going to be looking at increasing daylight, which means from December 21st in the Northern Hemisphere toward June 21st, the daylight increases. As it does, it sends out melanotropic stimulating hormone. And that goes to melanocytes that say, hey, shed your hair coat, summer's coming. And it does that. And with decreasing daylight, it says, okay, stop sending out melanotropic signal uh, hormone and that's stimulating hormone. Sorry, it gets confusing too. Um, and that um, tells the um, animal, the horse in this case, to uh, maintain its hair coat and, and actually increase the hair coat because winter's coming, you need to stay warm. So these are three examples of, uh, of what goes on using the hypothalamus to the pituitary to the target organ. Now, in Cushing's disease, What's happening is the hypothalamus is measuring the levels of cortisol and it says, oh, we're getting high levels. Let's send a message to the pituitary and say, cut down the ACTH so we s slow down the production of uh, cortisol. That message never gets through. 
So it is a neurodegenerative disease. The, the uh, hypothalamus is saying, stop. It's like going down a hill in a truck that the brakes don't work and you keep pressing and pressing and pressing on the brakes and nothing happens. The truck keeps going faster and faster. Cortisol levels increase. You have high cortisol. That's the definition of Cushing's disease. Now, keep in mind, the hypothalamus is working just fine. The pituitary is working just fine. It's sending out ACTH. It's doing its job. The adrenals are working just fine. They're producing more cortisol. Where the problem lies is the communication between the hypothalamus and pituitary. And that's where uh, pergolide comes in. Pergolide is what uh, you give. It's a dopamine type drug. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter. And the neurotransmitter that you're giving is putting brakes on the on the runaway truck to slow down the production of ACTH. That call, tells the adrenals to s decrease the amount of uh, cortisol being produced. And that's what Cushing's disease is all about. It has nothing to do with pituitary. It's fine. It hypertrophies, which is a fancy name for it grows large. Just like when you work your muscles here and work it more and more, they grow large too because it's being overworked. So that's what that's going on. But also you can get diabetes insipidus. Diabetes insipidus, not to be include, in, uh, confused with diabetes mellitus, is when the... Um, Kidneys don't get the message to stop to start to concentrate the urine through ADH. So it creates more and more urine. It looks just like water. And the horse is peeing a, a lake in its stall and drinking copious amounts of water. I mean like three, four, five bucketfuls at a time. It's just drinking all the time because it's peeing everything out. That's diabetes insipidus. Same problem. Now we also look at some horses whose hair coat doesn't shed in the springtime. The hair coat that was made in the fall is still on there in April, May, and June, and you have to shave it off. That's because the message from the hypothalamus pituitary is still not working. In comes pergolide. Pergolide helps to uh, control that uh, production, that, that message that's being sent to the pituitary, so the pituitary can do its job properly. That's what's going on now. <laughs> Not to sound like a, a broken record or a, a struck. And you guys who are young, you don't even know what a record is. So that's really not a good example. But not to be sounding the same thing over and over again and sounding monotonous. But if all neurotransmitters, including dopamine, are proteins, and my big thing is I'm seeing more and more protein deficiencies in horses, it goes to, it, it may be a good hypothesis that some of these horses are low on proteins and they're not getting the neurotransmitters they need done. Now, there may be a ton of other factors for why dopamine's not being produced, or maybe dopamine is being produced, but the receptors in, or the uh, transmitter isn't being used, and that's why pergolide's got to come in. You know, it's a little bit confusing here, and I don't blame you to scratch your head at this point. All you know is you're adding pergolide, the horse gets better. But what I'm suggesting is, and I've had some horses that have gone through their veterinarian to test for their horse after they've gone on a, a protocol of increasing their protein and decreasing the grain, which decreases inflammation in the gut and decreases the loss of protein, that these horses, after they're on the program for a little bit, they measure and they find their cortisol levels are, are doing well. They're able to back off and even eliminate the dosing of pergolide. That would be a fantastic thing if you're a lab guy, if you're a, um, um, what am I thinking, a researcher who wants to look into something, I'd be looking at why is this dopamine not occurring, look at the protein that the horse is getting, and see if we can put two and two together here. Because right now I'm getting a lot of horses coming back to me saying, hey, I've been testing the protein, uh, the pergolide, or uh, the cortisol levels, and I've been able to back off the pergolide now that I'm on the uh, higher protein. So that's my thoughts. That explains Cushing's disease. Um, it's another um, little bit of tidbit for you to put together and, and, and to answer the question, uh, why is this happening to my horse? And I hope this helps. I'll be back another day for some more um, information on how you can become your horse's advocate. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye.